Um, who's um, doing a business that, like um, that you're making a product and providing a product and manufacturing it and selling it to the public? Nobody? Well, I'm out of here then. I'm done. What, what kind of businesses are you guys doing? Child care? What do you mean? Consignment store. Cons consignment store? Okay. Yeah. We have flip houses. A what? Flip houses. Flip houses? Oh, yeah, okay. It's a good business. Yeah? What? Broadcasting. Okay. All right. Well, not a lot of product development uh, uses here, but, but it's still a very important thing. And really, the most important thing about product development, in my eyes, is, is where you get started. Um, and that is. Um, first off, knowing why you're doing what you're doing. So you all have probably deep reasons why you've selected the things that you are selecting. And that's really the first driving force of product development. You've got to know why you're doing something. And at ACS, maybe, and I might not follow along with this too well, but our, you know, our mission is to advance our industry through process and product innovation. And you guys can use that too. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a product, it could be a process. Developing a process is just as important, if not more important, than the product itself. For instance, we make, we make cabinets and store fixtures. So you guys probably know people who make cabinets. A lot of people make cabinets. Um, and the difference is our process. And that's, that's why we, we made sure to stick the word process in our um, mission statement. Because having a, a process is something that only your group can do. Like you guys have your own process that these, these guys could flip houses all over the country, but they couldn't do it like you do it. And that's what is basically your sustainable competitive advantage. And nobody else can knock that off. And so that's, that's process is just as important as, as product. And so keep, keep that in mind. Uh, okay, so basically product development starts with an idea. You've got an idea of what you wanna make, and what you want to what you want to sell to a certain market, and I guess you must have had an idea that has um, that you've come up with because there was a need in a market. And again, that's the next best thing for product development. You've got to know your market. If you're flipping houses in a down economy, you're you're in bad shape. Or if you're what is childcare? Somebody says childcare, and you're maybe in Florida or around senior citizens. I mean, you're in the wrong market, and so you gotta first of all define your market before you can really do much of anything in a, in terms of spending time on developing a product or a process. Um, so I think there's a run down here. So there's your idea. Okay, so then you've got to design it, okay? You've got to play around with it. You've got to work out the kinks in engineering. You've got to figure out what you're going to sell and if people are actually going to buy it. Um, you've got to think out the manufacturing process because, again, you know, we've, I've seen products designed or concepts of a product that is nothing like the original design because in the concept you haven't really thought out all the, the manufacturing processes and how you're going to train employees to, to make it or how you're going to put something together or if the material is even available. I mean there's so many things to consider besides just oh this is a really cool cabinet or oh this is a cool fixture or something like that. Let's make it. Well it might not work and if it does work it might be a lot more expensive than the market's willing to pay. And, and that's something that you don't want either because you can waste a lot of time and money in uh, product development. And uh, if something doesn't sell, it's just down the drain. Um, uh, the next is to build a prototype. Again, you build a prototype of a product or you've got your process in place, maybe a template of how you're going to run your business or something like that. Um, and you shoot holes in it before you really do a lot with it. You say, okay, this doesn't work, we built it here, this was harder to make than that part, or this corner didn't align right, and it was a really tough, tough thing to do. Um, and then you, um, once you get the prototype built and you've worked out all those kinks, you're basically ready to set up the manufacturing and you retool the factory and you and you move stuff around and you start training staff and you do all sorts of different things that um, can get the product down the line and make sure it's it's flawless and then the next is the obviously the release you know you've done all that work now you got to sell sell it and you know one thing to consider too is in manufacturing at least if you're going to make a product and and sell it are you going to, is it going to be so popular where you want to build up a bunch of inventory before you launch it? So you, if your customers are calling and, and saying, hey, we want this now, this is the new hot thing, we've got to have it, and you're like, okay, it's out the door. Or do you not build up inventory and say, okay, well, it's going to be, you know, 18 weeks out because we got hundreds of orders. And that's a really important decision to make because 
if you build up the inventory and the phone doesn't ring, you're kind of in trouble. Um, but if you don't build up the inventory and the phone ring, rings off the hook, you're also in trouble. So that's just kind of a, again, it goes back to the process. What does your company do? How do you operate? Um, what makes sense for your, your particular uh, business? Uh, you can't really see this. This is just a few uh, uh, cabinets we do. We do stuff for Goddard schools all over the country. Okay, and you also have to know um, your industry. You guys know what you guys know what an industry is, right? Just make it basically a collection of companies doing the same thing, competing against one another. And there's certain companies that just try to take over the whole industry. You know, Microsoft or something like that. Um, and so then there's different consumer markets within specific industries. So let's see, flipping houses and what were you again? Consignment store. So is that like, like an antique shop or something? Is there, or what do you think? Um, what is it? More okay. okay. And you guys were? Broadcast. Broadcast. You guys are tough. Okay. Well, okay. So there's a lot of different media outlets out there, right? There's like the news at, you know, Channel 13 or whatever. And then there's what, like Young Turks and stuff like that, or some of these other, you know, private media outlets, maybe. I don't, know, I don't know. But anyway, so there's different markets within a certain industry. You know, broadcasting is huge. There's a lot of different things. For instance, we're in cabinets. We sell cabinets to K-12 schools like this, just flat, basic, laminate cabinets. But we don't do any kitchen cabinets. You know, so you got to, when you pick your market and you pick what you're going to do, you got to make sure you're marketing to the right, you know, area within your market and you're competing against the right people. You know, um, if you, you're going to do clothes, you're not going to want to compete against somebody who does antiques or, or something like that, you know? Uh, what's that? Yeah, okay, so there's some more cabinets than we do. Um, again, talk about target markets. At ACS, we target um, architects, contractors, and our dealers will go out and sell to these guys. You know, we could waste a lot of time talking to residential contractors because we don't make residential cabinets. So it'd be kind of a waste. They wouldn't care if we developed a new product for a science lab or retail store or K through 12 school. So you gotta be careful of that as well. Um, on the construction side, you know, we, uh, or we sell to general contractors as well. We own a general uh, construction company and we sell to them, they're a customer, and it's kind of a vertical integration, which you know, maybe you'll learn about. Anybody know what vertical integration is? Is that, no? Well, it's, really, it's a really good thing to learn that going forward. Um, and so we sell these things. So we've got capacity for summer production. We've got a proven industry record and I don't even know what we sell. We're competitively priced and we've got a strong dealer network um, across the United States. And so those are the things we sell and we sell against our competitors because we think we're way better than them, which of course we are. Um, and another thing about competition too, I, I want to point this out, is when you think of your competition, okay, here's an example I've used before. When you think of Disney, um, Disney, who, who do you think of as a competitor of Disney? What's that? Nickelodeon. Okay, Nickelodeon. DreamWorks. DreamWorks? Okay, yeah. Somebody else said something else. DreamWorks? Yeah, okay. So, oh, all right. So what about, um, what about Harley Davidson? Is that a com competitor of Disney? No, why not? Okay, but what kind of money does Disney go after in your pocket? I've got money in my wallet. I've got certain money that I need to pay my bills. I've got my car payment, right? I've got, you know, dinner, meals. I've got then some fun money, right? Right, so wouldn't I buy a Harley with that fun money? Or maybe I could take the family on a trip to Disney World with that fun money. I'd probably buy a Harley over that. Um, so, so you got to think there's different kinds of competition out there. It's not just direct competition. Um, and that's an important lesson to, to learn too. So there are different companies competing for that same piece of your wallet. Uh, so, uh, Okay, another uh, important uh, thing is a SWOT analysis. Anybody familiar with the SWOT analysis? You are? Okay, let me go to the next slide here. Okay, you've got your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities. 
and threats. And this is a very valuable um, tool when, when trying to figure out which products to sell, which markets to go into, or how you stack up amongst the, your industry or your competition. Um, and so you, you, you write this down, and I've done this, we do this all the time, and you can do this for, for anything in your life. If you wanna buy a car, if you wanna decide which school to go to, or, or whatever, you can use a SWOT analysis. It's a very handy tool. Um, and so you look at your strengths. Okay, well, internally here, what are we better at than the other guys? What can we do? Maybe our process is better. Maybe our product is better. Maybe we flip houses faster than the other guy, or you know, make sure our kids are well taken care of better than you know, the other kids. I don't know. And, um, and, and so those, those are basically things you focus on internally. Uh, the next are your weaknesses. What are your weaknesses? You know, maybe, um, what, you, you don't have anything to talk about on the news. I don't know, that wouldn't really be a weakness, but that's more of a threat. There's no news going on. What are you gonna talk about? Um, um, a weakness, I don't know, maybe you're slower at flipping houses. So any kind of internal weaknesses. And another thing to remember is strengths and weaknesses when you're thinking about making a SWOT analysis, excuse me, um, strengths and weaknesses are more internally focused, whereas opportunities and threats are externally focused. And so you look at opportunities, okay, those are all the things that are around you on the outside that could um, be great things for you. And the threats, you know, a threat would be not having any news, or a threat would be a bad economy, or, you know, you know I don't know sick kids, I, you know, I don't know, but, um, and so that's, this is a very important tool, not just in business, but kind of all aspects of your life. I mean, you can use it, you know, for whatever you want. It's really easy to, to make up too. So, um, let's touch on that. Um, another thing about your industry, if, is your industry kind of like a dying industry or is it an up and coming industry? Look at the tech industry, you know, that's a lot different than the cabinet industry, I can tell you that much. But the cabinet industry has figured out a lot of things over, you know, hundreds or thousands of years of cabinet making that the, you know, the tech firms haven't quite figured out yet. And so there's some benefits to each, neither one of them is, is bad. Um, and so, what, what are the specific needs within industries? I mean, you, I bet you could all rattle off um, a list of needs within, you know, your, uh, your industries there. So, um, and the competition, you know, we talked a little bit about competi competition, the Disney and Harley thing. Again, I think that's a really important thing to, to remember because it's, you know, not easily, uh, it, it's not so easy to pinpoint all the time who, who your competition is. And they're out there, you know, you can say, I've got this thing, it's better than better mousetrap or whatever. But that's not gonna last long and somebody else will knock it off. It, it does happen and so you really gotta just keep your, keep your eye out. But again, I go back to the processes internally. That's something that somebody just can't knock off. Um, okay, and there's a, here's a few resources. Uh, you'll get a copy of these slides, I think, so you can have access to these uh, resources. So that's, that's kind of it. Um, I know I kind of rushed through some of this, I don't know, um, but what 